Grace and peace to you. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is good to see everybody in worship with us this Sunday morning. I have a few announcements for you before we begin our worship. As you know, we had our friendship fiesta last night. It was an amazing success. We handed out more than 220 meals and we have raised $3,455 that all went to um, the Amigas. And we had a wonderful time. A lot of people came out from the community. Thank you all from our church who have been directing traffic, have been runners, have been cleaning up and uh, making all this possible. It was a good time of fellowship and what a good cause and was Good to meet some of the amigas who prepared the food who were here with us last night and to have more conversation with Jeff. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been a wonderful night. The other note that I wanted to uh, bring to your awareness, we've mailed our stewardship packets this week. You should be receiving it uh, in the mail any day now. And I invite you to fill out the covenant form and send it back to our church. Included in our stewardship packet is also an Advent devotional um, that we are going to uh, use this season. Next Sunday is our Commitment Sunday when we will dedicate our gifts to God and give thanks for uh, God's generosity and for all of us in this community who make uh, our ministries and our life together possible. Well, with that, let us open our hearts and let us worship God. We'll start with the gathering words. This is the Lord's day, the day of wonder and grace. Let us break forth in joyous worship of the one who calls us here. Well, the Lord has comforted us. God has compassion on all, the fearful and the suffering. To all who hunger and thirst. God promises abundant provisions. God will not abandon us. We are inscribed on the palm of God's hand. Gracious God, who clothes the lilies and feeds the birds and cares for us too, help us bring to you our worries and doubts, and open our hearts so we may be filled with hope. We confess that we struggle to be faithful disciples. Entrusted with your gifts, we fail to empty ourselves of our privilege and be a blessing to others. We want our security assured, our desires satisfied first, quick to scorn others for the poor choices they make. Forgive us, God of new beginnings. Open our eyes to your kingdom already in our midst, embodied and demonstrated by Jesus, our friend, teacher, and life. May we commit anew to walking in his light, loving all joyfully and generously. Amen. <laughs>
Let us join our hearts in prayer. Holy and gracious God, send your Holy Spirit upon us. May we hear your words afresh and maybe we be convicted by those words and transformed so that we can hold on to hope and continue to live joyful and generous lives of discipleship. In your name we pray, amen. For our second Sunday in the Growing in Joyful Generosity series, we are going to explore a passage from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 26 through 34. Listen to what the Spirit tells us this morning. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet our Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can, they, can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will God not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and God's righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do you remember those early weeks of the pandemic when we had to shut down in-person worship, when most restaurants and bars and gyms and all kinds of businesses came to a halt across the globe? While well, that was a shocking new reality for many of us, one of the more helpful outcomes of those closures was, as many people on all continents observed, that the air has become a bit cleaner in those weeks. You see, as transportation and everyday car traffic had to be drastically scaled back, the pol pollution in the air diminished significantly. What also struck, struck people's attention was that they could hear more intense chatter from the birds, as if the birds of the air were celebrating the improvement of the air quality, the improvement of the quality of life. I remembered those early spring days as I have been reflecting on our scripture passage this week. For the increased bird song we heard as business as usual was forced to slow down has reminded me, and I think many of us, of course, of our interconnectedness with the rest of creation, that our well being as human creatures is closely knit with that of the birds of the air and the lilies of the field into a beautiful tapestry that God has woven into order out of chaos, a tapestry of shared life, which God still invites us to continually create and recreate and care for in partnership with God 
and with one another. I believe this is what Jesus is teaching his disciples in our story. They need a reminder because the task before them to follow Jesus may seem daunting. They found Jesus convincing when they first met him, his vision about a world, what the world really should look like was appealing to them. So they committed to follow Jesus. Yet now in the face of the multitude of needs of pain and suffering they encounter, they are not sure they got what it takes to do this. For as we read at the end of chapter four of the Gospel of Matthew, the news travels fast about Jesus and his ministry. People come from all over the region, even beyond the borders from across the Jordan and Syria to seek healing, comfort and restoration. So I can imagine the disciples wondering, do we have the skills to do this? We were good at fishing, but this healing business and interacting with all kinds of strangers is way out of our comfort zones. I can imagine them worrying about not really having the resources to do all this travel, to feed all the folk they encounter. And what about their needs and their families? And then the whole question about safety, for they have heard that John the baptizer did not fare so well because his teaching about this new coming world was not popular with the authorities and it got him arrested. As we plan for next year and work on our budget for our worship and ministry here at Westminster, perhaps we find ourselves not unlike the disciples that we too may worry about tomorrow. With the disruptions caused by the pandemic, how can we be the church that we profess to be? How can we continue to engage and care for our neighbors at the college and in the wider community at this time of social distancing? Will the pandemic impact our resources, we wonder, so that we won't have enough to care for those in need? How, we'll join, how we will join efforts that aim at dismantling unjust systems that keep so many without sustainable jobs, shelter, food, or clothing. Jesus tells the disciples, do not worry about tomorrow. What will you eat or drink? Not because the daily sustenance is not important. One only needs to read and remember his teachings known as the Sermon on the Mount or the Beatitudes earlier in chapter five, just preceding our story. One only needs to remember Jesus' teaching to recognize that the world Jesus envisions, the one he describes and is actively working to bring about is not a world of scarcity. Rather, Jesus proclaims a world where all have enough all are recognized and valued and can flourish, human and non-human neighbors alike. This is a world that comes into being as the disciples, as we follow in the ways taught by Jesus. Jesus invites the disciples, invites us to strive for this kingdom of God by prayerfully discerning God's ways by embodying the values and the lifestyle that Jesus teaches and models for us. Trusting that it is through the disciples, it is through us that God's purposes are moving to completion. During the weeks of preparation for our friendship fiesta that took place last night, I've been reflecting on how this partnership with the Immigrant Worker Project has grown over the years. As many of you know, 
It was about a decade ago that Westminster joined forces with people from local churches, as well as Salem Mennonite Church in Apple Creek to support Pastor Geraldo's advocacy for immigrants who faced unjust policing in that community. It was that work that connected us with the Immigrant Worker Project and with Jeff. And then later with the Society of Friends, we began organizing ecumenical services and also sessions where we would learn about immigration advocacy. And that's how we met the Amigas who catered food for these occasions. And from people like them, we learned about the difficulties of asylum seekers that asylum seekers face during their journey towards legal recognition in this country. The Amigas are asylum seeking women who are fleeing drug violence and the gangs of Mexico and Central America. Like Ilda, one of the women I met last night who cooked our food yesterday, she survived terrible domestic violence in Guatemala in 2013, only then to have her asylum claim rejected here in the US. Immigrant Worker Project appealed her case all the way to the Sixth Federal Circuit Court that ended up determining that Ilda indeed qualified for asylum because it was not reasonable for her to expect protection as an indigenous Guatemalan woman in her country. Yet as further restrictions on immigration have been put in place here by the current administration, her appeal was rejected again. So IWP is still working with her. Imagine a woman coming here to seek safety, a future without fear, and since 2013, not being allowed to work legally until her process is finished. Women like Ilda support themselves through Immigrant Worker Project's Amigas Cooperative by making jewelry or selling prepared food like what we had last night or cleaning homes. All these activities that are now severely limited because of the pandemic. In all these years, as we formed these relationships, Westminster felt the nudge to engage in support in more hands-on ways. And as you remember, one of the fruits of your labor of love and the widespread partnership in the community was the 15 passenger van that we were able to purchase last year. And yesterday we witnessed another amazing evidence of what is possible when we strive for God's ways in our very successful Friendship Fiesta, where we handed out the more than 220 meals prepared by our friends. The Friendship Fiesta is a wonderful example of how folk from Westminster prayerfully have discerned how can we continue to respond to God's calling to share God's love and our gifts, even now as we grapple with the pandemic. We have recognized that asylum seekers are so much more vulnerable during these times as they have very limited opportunity to gain income and access the care they need. And perhaps not unlike the disciples, we find, found ourselves also of little faith initially or we were wondering whether the pandemic may scare people from responding to our invitation. And what an amazing way to prove us otherwise. We have witnessed an incredible coming together of community last night. We have witnessed the abundance that can be found when we all share our resources. We have witnessed the deepening of relationships that offers our friends and us hope in these days. Hope that our faithful response to God and to our neighbors heals 
a bit of the world's brokenness. That one life at a time, difference is made and the world is changed to be more whole. Friends, Jesus is not downplaying or whitewashing the hardships and the challenges the world presents to us today. He's not promising that we will not encounter realities that are dangerous to our well-being and threatening to life as we respond to God's call. But we gather here week after week to learn more about his teachings, to understand the systems that counter God's promise of abundance, God's promise of abundance for all. And we gather here to be transformed by Jesus' example. As we come together as a community in his name, we experience the abundance that is possible when we give our gifts generously and make courageous choices regarding our ministries. So we continue to trust God's promises and nurture life for all God's creatures. May we do so as we move forward boldly with our journey. Amen. Called as partners in Christ's service, called to ministries of grace, we respond with deep commitment, fresh new lines of faith to trace. May we learn the art of sharing side by side and friend with friend, equal sharing your joys and concerns. So feel free to unmute yourself and share any joys and concerns that you have. Please join me in uh, uh, this time of prayer. Good and gracious God, we know that you are a God of hope. So on this day, we ask for just that, hope. We, we live in a time that is so easy to despair. And at times that desperation is good for a reason. We, can, we, we acknowledge that we can hurt, we can be angry, we can be sad. We know that you know those feelings as well. You know our thoughts and feelings, and we ask you to bring peace that surpasses all understanding to us. We ask for hope during con 
during a continued pandemic in which we see a rise of more cases of COVID-19. May we see hope in people doing their part to mitigate the spread of this virus. Be with the medical staff who continue to work to bring relief to patients. As this long journey continues, show us ways to uplift our spirits and those of our neighbors in safe manners. We ask for hope for those who grieve the loss of loved ones. Grief is a place where hope is not easily found. Therefore, reveal your hope to them with comfort and grace. We pray, we pray for good distractions when they are needed, and we pray for shoulders to cry on when we must cry out in grief. Grief is complicated, yet we ask you to be a part of it with us. We pray for hope for our siblings experiencing anxiety and or depression. May they find hope and belonging in your love for them. We pray for friends, family, and strangers to remind them of the truth that they are your beloved children. May they feel deep in their souls that they are loved and through your grace, they are enough. We pray for hope in our divided country. We, we quickly be, become divided when we forget to see our neighbors as humans, when we see others as a political party, as enemies and as others we become divided. God of justice, instill in us hope. We know that love, sacrifice, hope, and justice can change us from enemies into friends. Teach us to be what Dr. King hoped to see, a beloved community. We pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of our hope, who taught us to pray saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
friends, let us join and continue to live in the light as, you, as we continue our journey into the week, loving tenderly, working for justice, knowing God's gracious provisions for us. Let us live with joyful generosity each and every day. And as we go, may we know God's love, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that accompanies us today and tomorrow and always. Amen.